Hello and welcome back to Information Technology Fundamentals. Today we're going to be looking at security basics. We're going to distinguish threats to the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of our computing systems. We're going to look at and define what a social engineering attack is. This we're going to describe the importance of business continuity and how to make our business systems fault tolerant. And we're going to explain the importance of disaster recovery plans. Let's start by defining something called the CIA triad. CIA stands for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And this is what we're going to use to secure our information. We are going to balance those three ideas uh, when we are creating our security system. And the ways we're going to go about that is we're going to control access to our resources. And we want to always provide this balance between making something secure and making it accessible to everybody on the network. And we also have to continually be evaluating uh, our, our system for security threats, both physical and cyber. So confidentiality means uh, that we want to make sure that the information we have that no one else can look at it or understand it. Uh, that sometimes may be called snooping or eavesdropping on a conversation. Frequently, the uh, bad actors will use social engineering techniques such as dumpster diving, looking through the trash, to try and find confidential information as well. In the computer world, uh, our main tool for confidentiality uh, and it, maintaining it is going to be encryption. Integrity, we want to make sure that the information we sent is exactly what the person receives, that nobody changed it. Uh, a classic uh, type of attack in this is going to be man in the middle, where the person intercepts the data, changes it slightly, and sends it on to the receiver, and they don't know that something was changed. So that's a man in the middle. Replay is another type of attack. Uh, and if we just went with uh, a non-technical attack, impersonation would be an example of that as well. And availability is just the uh, making sure that our computer resources are available all the time to the appropriate people. Uh, probably heard the term denial of service where a network becomes overwhelmed with traffic and it can no longer serve up the data, but also power outages, hardware failures, destruction, maybe through weather or fire, uh, or even a service outage of our internet uh, would affect our availability of our network resources. So one of the set of tools that we use to maintain our network are frequently referred to as the three A's, authorization, authentication, and auditing. And really what we're talking about is who has access to our network. So authentication is the uh, a user proving who they say they are, and that user or person becomes associated with a unique uh, account that has certain permissions. So after we authenticate the person, we give them authorization or permission to access resources. So authorization creates barriers around resources uh, so that only the people that are supposed to use them can. And auditing or accounting is where we keep track of who accessed what uh, resource on our network. Very important for figuring out what happened and after action a report on, uh, on an event in, on our network. Social engineering is a technique attackers use to compromise a security system. These are going to be non-technical types of attacks. Sometimes they do it by exploiting trust and some other things with uh, people at the company. Because attackers realize that any piece of information they can get about a company can be helpful in making further social engineering attacks, which will likely lead to uh, some type of technical attack. So social engineering is rarely used just by itself, but it's used to get information to help an attacker plan, uh, further plan their attack. So impersonation and trust and dumpster diving are all examples of this. You know, 
uh, impersonation is just simply gaining access by trying to be pretending somebody else. Um, perhaps, you know, going to a company and uh, pretending to be some type of technician and then uh, being allowed into a secure area. So a bad actor is using the trust of the uniform and some other things to get people to do what uh, or reveal information that they're looking for. And of course, dumpster diving is just simply somebody going through the trash looking for discarded company information that was not shredded or otherwise disposed of properly. Uh, we hear a lot about identity theft and identity fraud, and that's just some uh, simply somebody masquerading as somebody else, uh, controlling their accounts. Uh, perhaps um, this is done to for financial gain, and typically it happens after PII, personally identifiable information, has been stolen, giving them access to the accounts. One of the ways this can happen at a business is for a person to walk through, say, a whole row of cubicles and look over people's uh, shoulders to see what they're doing and perhaps grab information off of their screens. Well, if we want to mitigate or defeat social engineering attacks, the first thing we need to do is just training and education with our users, uh, making sure that they're aware uh, and make people who are at the company prove who they are, and making sure our entrance policy is such that uh, people can't just walk in and look around. We have to make sure that we have uh, the proper security procedures in place to make that happen. You know, the other things we can do is just screen locks on the uh, computers. So after a set amount of time, it, uh, it goes to what we typically call a screensaver. Uh, and make sure that everyone at the company is got some type of identity identity badge, they're escorted, and that uh, they're not allowed into unsecure places, and we can use security doors to help us with that. Business continuity is critical, uh, and we have to build in redundancy into our business, and we have to have a plan on what we're going to do if an outage occurs. Because any type of outage is going to cause some type of financial damage, and perhaps even a reputational damage, depending on our business and how long the outage is. So in order to, uh, to make sure, we have to have fault tolerance. So we have to make sure our system has multiple points of failures, and we have to have a contingency plan to cope with those. So, for example, if we were a company that worked, relied heavily on the internet, maybe we'd have two internet service providers to give us more than one uh, so if one ISP went down, we'd have the other. So when we do that, we also are going to call that failover. So for our data, we need to make sure we have it backed up, uh, frequently referred to as data redundancy. We can do that through RAID, which is we have a redundant array of independent disks on our computer. So a very simple one is where we have two disks and they're mirrored, so any information that is stored on one is instantly stored on the other one. If one of the disks goes down, we can still continue forward. We can add a third disk into that, uh, that scenario, and in that case, the third disk becomes what they call a parity disk, which means it checks to make sure that the first two disks are identical. But RAID doesn't replace the need for backups. Uh, we still have to back up our data off-site, as we talked about in the previous lecture. We also want to make sure our network has a redundancy. If we look at our network diagram and we see a single point where everything was go through, we have to have a plan to um, be able to quickly recover if that node goes down, or we have to make another path through the node. Now, some of our equipment on the network, uh, routers in particular, can, can detect when a link has failed and create another path. Uh, but a layer 2 switch is not going to do that, so we have to keep all that in mind as we design the network, make sure we have a redundancy for most of our paths. Power redundancy is done through the use of a UPS uh, uninterpol uninterruptible power supply. Uh, this can come in several different flavors. On a small business, you might just have uh, a battery backup. On a large network, you might have a 
batteries, which give you instantaneous power, but then a generator to back that up uh, uh, as well. So we can do that a few different ways, but we should uh, make sure that our power supply has redundancy built into it as well. Now, if we have a natural disaster of some sort, our whole site could potentially be destroyed either through weather or fire. So businesses should have a plan on what they're going to do in the event that happens. Some businesses will purchase a completely backup site that is in not in the same geographical information. This can come in uh, several flavors. Uh, they call them cold, warm, and hot, just depending on how set up they are ahead of time. And this allows a business to move quickly and continue operations in the event their original or their uh, main site is somehow destroyed by weather or fire. We have to have a plan for disaster recovery. They can come, they can be uh, fairly compact or pretty detailed. It just depends on the business and how, uh, how much, uh, how many things they have to take into account. It should have things like workflows and resources, how we're going to recover those, how we're going to recover our data. We should have a wide range of uh, different plans uh, and where you are in the country will also change what's in the plan as well we have to in the plan we should have a prioritization of what resources we cover first how we're recovering our data and how we're restoring access to that data so we in this video we looked at uh, different types of threats to uh, the cia triad we looked at uh, social engineering techniques, and the importance of business continuity and how to make our systems fault tolerance. And we finished by looking at the importance of using and building a disaster recovery plan.